Ladies and gentlemen, the topic of our discussion today is simple yet profound. Get up and make it happen. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. Jim, that sounds like a cliche. We've heard that before, and you're right, you have heard it before, but have you really listened? Have you truly internalized what it means to get up and make it happen? Because let me tell you, there's a world of difference between hearing something and living it. See, life is not a spectator sport. You can't sit on the sidelines and expect success to come knocking on your door. Success doesn't come to you. You go to it. And that journey begins with one simple act. Getting up isn't just about physically rising from your bed in the morning. Although that's certainly part of it, getting up is a mindset. It's a decision you make every single day to take action, to move forward, to pursue your dreams with relentless determination. Think about it. How many opportunities have you missed because you didn't get up? How many dreams have remained unfulfilled because you didn't take that first step? The world is full of people who had great ideas, who had immense potential, but who never got up to make it happen. Don't let that be you. No, I'm not saying it's easy. Getting up can be the hardest thing you do all day. It's so much more comfortable to stay where you are, to stick with what's familiar, to avoid the risk and the challenge of pursuing something greater. But comfort is the ante of growth. Comfort is what keeps you stuck in mediocrity while greatness passes you by. So how do we overcome this? How do we cultivate the habit of getting up, of taking action, of making things happen? Well, it starts with your philosophy. You see, your philosophy is the foundation of everything you do. It's the set of beliefs and principles that guide your actions and shape your life. And if your philosophy doesn't include the idea that you are responsible for your own success, that you have the power to shape your destiny, then you're already at a disadvantage. I want you to take a moment right now, examine your philosophy. What do you believe about success? What do you believe about your own capabilities? Do you believe that you have what it takes to achieve your dreams? Or do you believe that success is for other people? That you're somehow not worthy or capable of greatness? So your philosophy is holding you back. It's time for a change. It's time to adopt a philosophy of action, a philosophy that says, I can and I will. Because here's the truth. You are capable of far more than you realize. You have untapped potential just waiting to be unleashed. But that potential will remain dormant unless you get up and make it happen. Now, once you've got your philosophy straight, the next step is to set goals. Goals are the roadmap to your dreams. They give you direction, they give you purpose, they give you something to strive for. Without goals, you're like a ship. Without a rudder drifting aimlessly on the sea of life. Free to be specific. Now, and they need to be written down, vague wishes and hopes floating around. In your head aren't goals, they're daydreams. Real goals are concrete, they're measurable, and they're committed to paper. So I want you to take out a piece of paper right now. Go ahead, I'll wait. Now I want you to write down your top three goals for the next year. Be specific. Don't just write, make more money. Write, increase my income by 25 by December 31st. Don't just write, get in shape. All right, lose 20 pounds and run a 5K by June 1st. See the difference. When you get specific, when you put a deadline on your goals, they become real. And they become actionable, and most importantly, they give you something to get up for every single day. But setting goals is just the beginning. The real work comes in pursuing those goals day in and day out. And that's where discipline comes in. Discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishment. It's what gets you out of bed when you'd rather sleep in. It's what keeps you working when you'd rather be watching TV. It's what makes you save money when you'd rather be spending it. Discipline isn't always fun. In fact, it's often comfortable that discomfort is the price of growth. Discomfort is what separates the successful from the unsuccessful. The successful are willing to do what's uncomfortable now in order to have comfort later. The unsuccessful choose comfort now and have discomfort later. Which group do you want to be in? Because I can tell you right now the choice is yours. You have the power to choose discipline over comfort, action over inaction, success over mediocrity, but you have to make that choice every single day. Now I can see some of you shifting in your seats. You're thinking, Jim, this all sounds great, but it's not that simple. I have obstacles, I have challenges, I have reasons why I can't just get up and make it happen. And to that I say, of course you have obstacles, of course you have challenges. Everyone does. Success isn't the absence of problems. It's the ability to deal with problems. The question isn't whether you'll face obstacles. The question is how you'll respond to them. So there are two types of people in this world. Those who make excuses and those who make progress. 
Which one are you? Because let me tell you, you can't be both. Every time you make an excuse, you're choosing not to make progress. Every time you blame your circumstances, you're giving away your power to change them. So I've met people from all walks of life. People that have every reason to fail, every excuse not to succeed. But they didn't use those excuses. They didn't let their circumstances define them. They got up and they made it happen. I remember talking to a young man once who had grown up in poverty, who had no formal education, who had every reason to believe that success wasn't for him. But you know what he did? He got up every day and worked on improving himself. He read books, he sought out mentors, he took any job. He could get and worked his way up. Today, he's a successful entrepreneur, employing dozens of people and living the life of his dreams. What was the difference between him and all the others who stayed stuck in their circumstances? He refused to make excuses. He refused to let his past dictate his future. He got up and he made it happen. So now I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying you won't face setbacks and disappointments along the way, but here's what I am saying. The setbacks and disappointments are part of the journey. They're not reasons to give up. They're opportunities to grow stronger, to learn, to refine your approach. Think about it like that. It's every time you face an obstacle and overcome it, you're building a muscle. The muscle of resilience, of perseverance, of determination. And the more you exercise that muscle, the stronger it becomes soon. Obstacles that once seemed insurmountable become mere speed bumps on your road to success. But you have to keep getting up. You have to keep moving forward because success isn't a destination. It's a journey. It's a process of constant growth, constant improvement, constant action. And that brings me to the crucial points, the importance of continuous learning. You see, the world is constantly changing. What worked yesterday might not work tomorrow. The skills that got you where you are today might not be enough to get you where you want to go tomorrow. So that's why successful people are always learning. I'm always growing, always seeking new knowledge and new skills. They understand that education doesn't stop when you leave school. Education is a lifelong process. So I want to challenge you. What are you doing to educate yourself? What books are you reading? What skills are you developing? What experts are you learning from? Because let me tell you, the investment you make in your own education will pay dividends for the rest of your life. I make it a point to read at least one book a week. I attend seminars, I listen to podcasts, I seek out conversations with people who know more than I do. Why? Because I understand that my level of success will rarely exceed my level of personal development. If I want to achieve more, I need to become more. And the same is true for you. If you want to change your life, you need to change yourself. If you want to achieve more, you need to become more. And that process starts with a commitment to continuous learning and personal growth. So now as we talk about getting up and making it happen, I want to address something that often holds people back. Fear. Fear of failure. Fear of the unknown. Fear of what others might think. These fears can be paralyzing. They can keep you stuck, keep you from taking action, keep you from getting up and making it happen. It's not real. Fear is just false evidence appearing real. It's a creation of your mind, a projection of what might happen, not what will happen. And more often than not, the things we fear never come to pass. So how do we overcome fear? We take action. We move forward despite the fear, because here's the thing. Courage isn't the absence of fear. Courage is taking action in the face of fear. It's feeling the fear and doing it anyway. Think about it. Every great achievement in history was accompanied by fear. The first person to fly in an airplane was afraid. The first person to walk on the moon was afraid. The entrepreneur starting their first business is afraid, but they didn't let that fear stop them. They got up and they made it happen. And you know what? Once you start taking action, once you start moving forward, despite your fears, something magical happens. The fear starts to dissipate. It loses its power over you because you realize that you're capable of more than you thought, that you're stronger than you believed. So I challenge you. You've been afraid to do. What's a goal you've been hesitating to pursue because of fear? I want you to commit right now to taking one small step towards that goal. It's just one step. Because that one step can be the beginning of a whole new journey. Now, as we're talking about getting up and making it happen, I want to touch on something that's critically important. The power of your associations. You see, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Your environment, the people you surround yourself with, has a profound impact on your thoughts, your beliefs, your actions. Think about it. If you're surrounded by negative people, people who are always complaining, always making excuses, always settling for less, 
What effect do you think that has on you? It drags you down. It makes it harder for you to get up. Harder for you to take action. Harder for you to pursue your dreams. On the other hand, if you're surrounded by positive, ambitious people, people who are always striving to improve, always pushing themselves to achieve more, what effect does that have? It lifts you up. It inspires you, challenges you to be better. So I want you to take a hard look at your associations. Are the people in your life helping you grow? Or are they holding you back? Are they encouraging you to get up and make it happen? Or are they making excuses for why you can't? Now I'm not saying you need to cut people out of your life. But I am saying you need to be intentional about who you spend your time with. Seek out people who inspire you, who challenge you, who push you to be better. Just join mastermind groups. Attend networking events. Find mentors who have achieved what you want to achieve. Here's the truth. Success leaves clues. If you want to be successful, study successful people. Learn from them. Emulate them. Surround yourself with them. Because when you do, success becomes not just possible, but probable. So now as we talk about getting up and making it happen, I want to address something that's often overlooked, the importance of taking care of yourself. You see, you are your most valuable asset. Your health, your energy, your mental state. These are the foundations upon which your success is built. Think about it. How can you get up and make it happen if you're constantly tired? If you're always stressed, if you're not taking care of your physical and mental health, you can't, at least not for long. You might be able to push through for a while, but eventually it catches up with you. That's why successful people prioritize self-care. They understand that their ability to achieve their goals, to make things happen, is directly tied to their personal well-being. They make time for exercise, for proper nutrition, for adequate sleep. They practice stress management techniques like meditation or journaling. They make time for activities that recharge them, that bring them joy and fulfillment. So I challenge you. What are you doing to take care of yourself? Are you giving your body the fuel it needs to perform at its best? Are you giving your mind the rest and rejuvenation it needs to stay sharp and focused? Are you making time for the things that bring you joy and fulfillment? Because here's the thing. Self-care isn't selfish. It's not a luxury. It's a necessity. It's what allows you to show up fully, to give your best, to get up and make it happen day after day. So now, as we continue our discussion on getting up and making it happen, I want to talk about something that's absolutely crucial. The power of persistence. You see, success rarely happens overnight. It's not about making one big leap. It's about taking many small steps consistently over time. Let's think about any great achievement in history. The pyramids weren't built in a day. Great companies weren't built in a week. Olympic athletes don't become champions overnight. These achievements are the result of persistent effort of showing up day after day, of getting up and making it happen even when it's hard, even when it seems like nothing is working. I often tell the story of the stonecutters. You see, a stonecutter might hammer away at a rock a hundred times without seeing even a crack. But on the hundred and first blow, the rock splits in two. It wasn't that last blow that did it. It was all the blows that came before. That's how success works. You might work towards your goals for weeks, months, even years, without seeing significant progress. But if you persist, if you keep getting up and making it happen, eventually you'll break through. The key is to not give up before that breakthrough comes. Now I know what some of you are thinking. Jim, that sounds exhausting. It sounds like a lot of work, and you're right, it is. Success is not for the faint of heart. It's not for those who want an easy ride. It's for those who are willing to put in the work, day in and day out, regardless of whether they feel like it or not. But here's the thing. The work becomes easier when you're passionate about what you're doing. When you're pursuing goals that truly matter to you, when you're working towards a vision that excites you, the effort doesn't feel like a burden. It feels like an opportunity. That's why it's so important to set goals that align with your values, with your passions, because when you do, you tap into a wellspring of motivation that can sustain you through the tough times, through the setbacks and disappointments. So I ask you, are your goals aligned with your passions? Are you working towards something that truly excites you? Because if you're not, it's going to be a lot harder to get up and make it happen day after day. Now, as we talk about persistence, I want to address something that often trips people. Fear of failure. You see, many people don't persist because they're afraid of failing. They're afraid of putting in all that effort and not seeing results. They're afraid of what others might think if they don't succeed. So here's the truth about failure. 
It's not the opposite of success. It's part of success. Every successful person I've ever met has failed many times along the way. The difference is they didn't let those failures stop them. They got, they learned from their mistakes and they tried again. Thomas Edison failed thousands of times before he successfully created the light bulb. When asked about it, he said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. That's the mindset of a successful person. They don't see failure as a reason to give up. They see it as valuable feedback, as a stepping stone on the path to success. So how would you view failure? Is it something you fear, something you avoid at all costs? Or is it something you embrace as part of the learning process, as a necessary step on the path to success? Because here's the thing. If you're not failing, you're not pushing yourself hard enough. If you're not experiencing setbacks, you're not stepping out of your comfort zone. And it's outside of your comfort zone where real growth happens, where real success is achieved. Now as we continue our discussion on getting up and making it happen, I want to talk about something that's often overlooked. You see, your life today is essentially the sum of your habits. But how you spend your time each day, the choices you make, the actions you take, these are all governed by your habits. And here's the thing about habits. They're incredibly powerful. Once formed, they operate on autopilot. They don't require willpower or conscious thought. They just happen. Think about it. You don't have to remind yourself to brush your teeth in the morning. You don't have to psych yourself up to do it. It's just a habit. You do it automatically. Now imagine if you could harness that power for your goals. Imagine if you could make getting up and making it happen a habit, something you do automatically without having to think about it or force yourself to do it. So that's the power of habit formation. And then it's a key strategy that successful people use to achieve their goals. They don't rely on motivation or willpower. They create habits that align with their goals, habits that move them forward automatically. So how do we create these powerful habits? It starts with small, consistent actions. You don't try to change everything overnight. You start small. You pick one habit that will move you towards your goals, and you commit to doing it every day, no matter what. Maybe it's waking up 30 minutes earlier to work on your side business. Maybe it's reading 10 pages of a book every day. Maybe it's making one sales call before lunch. Whatever it is, make it small enough that you can do it consistently even on your worst days. Even every single day. No exceptions, no excuses. Because consistency is what turns actions into habits. And once something becomes a habit, it becomes easy. It becomes automatic. Now I know what some of you are thinking, Jim. That sounds great. But I've tried to form habits before and it didn't stick. And I get it. Habit formation isn't easy. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes persistence. There's something that can help. The power of environment design. You see, your environment has a huge impact on your behavior. If you want to make a habit stick, design your environment to support that habit. If you want to wake up earlier, put your alarm clock across the room so you have to get out of bed to turn it off. If you want to read more, leave a book on your pillow so it's the first thing you see when you go to bed. If you want to eat healthier, stock your fridge with healthy foods and get rid of the junk. By designing your environment to support your habits, you make it easier to stick to them. You reduce the friction, you reduce the need for willpower, and you increase your chances of success. Now, as we near the end of our time together, I want to touch on something that's absolutely crucial. The power of belief. You see, at the end of the day, whether you get up and make it happen or not comes down to one thing, what you believe about yourself. Do you believe you're capable of achieving your goals? Do you believe you deserve success? Do you believe you have what it takes to overcome obstacles and persevere in the face of challenges? Because here's the trees. Your beliefs shape your reality. If you believe you can't do something, you're right. If you believe you can, you're right. Your beliefs determine your actions and your actions determine your results. So that's why it's so important to cultivate positive. Empowering beliefs to challenge the limiting beliefs that hold you back, to feed your mind with positive affirmations, with stories of success, with evidence that supports your ability to achieve your goals. I want you to take a moment right now and think about your beliefs. What do you believe about your ability to succeed? What do you believe about your potential? Are these beliefs serving you or are they holding you back? Do you find that your beliefs are limiting you? There is time for a change. It's time to adopt new beliefs, beliefs that empower you, beliefs that support your goals and your vision for your life. Because here's the thing, 
You have incredible potential. You have gifts and talents that the world needs. You have the ability to achieve amazing things. But none of that matters if you don't believe it yourself. So I challenge you. Choose to believe in yourself. Choose to believe in your potential. Choose to believe that you can get up and make it happen no matter what obstacles you face. Wrap up, I want to leave you with this theory. Your life is a gift. It's a precious opportunity. And what you do with that opportunity is up to you. You can choose to drift through life, reacting to circumstances, letting others determine your path. Or you can choose to take control, to get up and make it happen, to create the life you truly desire. The choice is yours. If I urge you, don't waste this opportunity. Don't let fear hold you back. Don't let excuses keep you stuck. Don't let limiting beliefs rob you of your potential. Get up. Take action. Make it happen. Because you can. Because you must. Because the world needs what you have to offer. Just remember, success is not something you pursue. Czar, success is something you attract by the person you become. So focus on becoming the kind of person who gets up and makes it happen every single day. Develop the habits. Cultivate the mindset. Take the actions that align with your goals and your vision for your life. It won't be easy. There will be challenges. There will be setbacks. There will be days when you want to give up. But I promise you it will be worth it. Because on the other side of those challenges, on the other side of those setbacks, is the life you've always dreamed of. The success you've always wanted. The impact you've always desired to make. Starting today, commit. Getting up and making it happen. Commit to taking action towards your goals. Every single day, no matter what. Commit to becoming the kind of person who doesn't just dream about success, but who goes out and creates it. Because you can. Because you must. Because your time is now. Thank you.